Hello, welcome to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a filter which is practically the same as the previous model with one small change. Now this multi-story filter is the JBL Greenline E1902. Now in the 1901 video from a while back Unfortunately, there was a tray missing in that filter, so consequently the information in that video isn't particularly accurate, although I did amend the details in the video description and the pinned comment. That one took, I think, around about four kilos. So because this one that came from Jason didn't come with anything in it, apart from the two top foams, I've already set it up. I know that this one takes over five kilos. The 1901 and 1902 should both take over five kilos of media. Really, before I show you how I've set it up, I'll just run through the main features of it, just in case anybody isn't familiar with this particular filter or indeed any of the JBL filters. So, it has wheels. That's handy if you've got it in a cabinet. Instead of lifting it out, you can wheel it to the edge of the cabinet and then lift it out. That'll save a lot of people's backs because when this thing's full of water and media, it's probably going to weigh maybe close to 20 kilos or thereabouts. Even with all the trays currently removed, there's a little bit of weight to it. Just imagine when it's full of water and full of fully waterlogged media as well. It's going to be heavy. Externally, it's pretty much the same as a 1901. It's got four release clasps here, which are reasonably robust. It's quite low profile as well, there's no sticky out bits, nothing to get your hands caught on when you're maintaining it. And it's got a little priming button here. Now Jason said that this was stuck. It isn't stuck, but it is quite hard to press. But once you've actually pressed it down, then after that it's not bad. I think it was just a little bit sticky when he sent it up, but it is working. Obviously you've got your in and out on the top here, same as a normal filter. The pump sits in the head of here. It draws water out from the top of the filter, so therefore the filter is a bottom up filter, but there is a pre-filter tray in the top, which I'll show you now. So that is our trays. We've got four main trays. We've got a pre-filter tray here. So the water spills in on top of here from your tank. It then, uh, where, there you go. It then goes through the sides, like underneath here, it's got ribs so the water can run. Once it's gone through the foam, it can go underneath the foam and out through the side here. And here, water then goes down the outside of these trays, between the trays and the, the bucket that these sit in, and then it goes up through the trays, then goes through this post filtering tray and is drawn out here by the pump and spat back to the tank. And the post filtering tray would normally come with this foam here, which you'd kind of class as a medium grade foam. That's good because you don't want anything fine above your media Otherwise, it clogs all the muck in your good media. And on the subject of good media, you can see what we've used in there. That's the Bio Home Ultimate. This little skinny tray is held on with little clips here and here. And it just sits underneath the post filtering tray. So you, you've basically got your pre and post filtering tray there. This, of course, doesn't have to be used for media. It's used for media now, but you know, it could be used for that foam that comes with the filter, or it could be used for carbon or something similar. Right, so remember, water goes down and then it comes up through the bottom tray. And in the bottom tray, we've got from the bottom up, coarse, medium, and fine pads. So all our mechanical filtration is done before the water rises up into our three main trays of media and possibly our fourth little skinny tray of media. Actually, it's worth pointing out that all of these trays come with handles, 
which are really well designed to fit flush in here. And the trays themselves are also nice quality as well. Not brittle at all, so you're not gonna break these in a hurry, unless you run over them or something. So that's our bottom tray. Remember, water's coming up through one and a half kilos of media, or just over one and a half kilos, through another one and a half kilos or more of media, and then through another one. So you can easily get over 4.5 kilos of media in those three trays in total. Once it gets up here, you've got about 600 grams of media in here. So obviously you can add that to the mix and that gives you over five kilos of media in your filter. It's actually about 5.2 kilos. So that works out at 11.4 pounds for anybody watching in the US. Now, before I put these back in the filter, I may as well explain what would normally come with this filter if you bought it new. Now, it would have the very coarse pre-filtering pad. This is an official JBL one. This has got some lovely little castellations on the top there that run through it. It's almost like a deck board. That increases the surface area greatly. So your contact surface area for your initial water that comes in from your tank is going to have really a long time before this gets too clogged and starts to slow the flow down and need cleaning. That's a nice touch. Your bottom tray would have something called Micromech in, which is basically white sintered glass. It's very dense though, and ordinarily that would be classed as a biological media. What it would be doing in the bottom is anybody's guess because it obviously wants to be after the mechanical filtration. These would all normally be filled with foams, which is not a good move, but they may have done that after seeing what Awazi had done with theirs. It would have been much better if they just put a couple of foams in here, maybe it's a, a medium and a fine, and then they just went with Micromech in here. But obviously that media is the most expensive part of the setup. It always is. I just wish manufacturers would put decent media or even half decent media in their filters instead of foams because you only need so many foams to ensure clarity of water. And after all those foams, you've got the post filter and foam. Remember, that one would ordinarily go in there. Right, just a few facts and figures on this filter. We managed to fit 5.2 kilos or 11.4 pounds into here. That makes it suitable if you want to achieve a full cycle on a normally stocked tropical tank for around about 500 litres, which is 132 US gallons. Or if it's a heavily stocked tank, like a goldfish tank, cichlid tank, a marine tank, um, discus tank, or just a rampantly overstocked tropical tank of nearer 250 litres, which is 66 US gallons. The pump shifts 1900 litres an hour, which is 500 gallons per hour, but bear in mind that is at a zero head with nothing in the filter. The minute you put this underneath your tank, then it has to blow the water up through a series of pipes and also draw it through all the foams and through the media and so on. You can more or less halve that. You can easily take maybe 40% off those figures, possibly 50, depending on how low it sits underneath your tank. And JBL said that this filter is suitable for tanks between 200 litres and 800 litres. Uh, 800 litres is 210 US gallons. Um, 200 is a bit pessimistic. I mean, even if for a heavily stocked tank, it'll do more than that with the way we've set it up now. Um, 800, yeah, I mean, if it's a fully planted tank, minimally stocked, set it up well. You could possibly attain a full cycle with that, especially if it's planted. I mean, the plants are going to help out massively as well. Uh, if you're looking for a filter which shifts a canny bit of water and holds a decent amount of media, this one would probably be worthy of consideration. It's actually got quite a small footprint as well, which may be important if you've got limited space in your cabinet. Obviously, it has a little bit of height to it. In fact, it's got quite a lot of height to it. And I would say that the filter nearest to this one would probably be the new uh, Biomaster 850 from Oase. Certainly in height and footprint, although the Oase does have the easy access pre-filter, which you can just slide out without taking the filter apart. 
that's probably its nearest competitor and you can get one of these around about 100 quid less than the Oasi 850 so if budget is a concern that uh, might just sway you you could get this one and pimp it up for the price of the Oasi one you could get this one for around about 200 English pounds when it's available. Uh, imports are a bit tricky now with all this Brexit nonsense and Covid agenda going on. Um, so I'll put links in the video description. They might not be available when you check them out. I'm sure they will become available as imports uh, get better into the UK. We're not entirely cut off from the rest of the world yet. Okay, so in the letter that Jason put in with this filter, he says it's for a 220 litre tank. This is going to do it all day, even if it's a heavily stocked tank. So he's made a good choice with this filter. And I hope that he's pleased with it when I send it back. Full of media. Yeah, this was a, a video I didn't really need to do. But I did have a lot of people asking about the differences between the O1 series and the O2 series. That is basically the pre-filter and the post-filter. That's pretty much the only difference. Um, certainly that I can see anyway there may be other slight cosmetic differences but without having the two of them side by side I couldn't tell you what they are thanks for watching and if you've got a filter that I haven't yet featured in this series and that list is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller by all means let me know best way to get a hold of me is by telephone my number is always in the video description and in the pinned comment and it isn't behind me, but the website is. That's filterpro.co.uk. My contact details are on there as well. There's also a contact form if you want to send me an email. It may take a lot longer to get to an email than it does to a phone call because if the phone rings, boosh, I answer it.